So it's about that time that it's birthday season. It's, For the next two months. It's great. So Kim's is coming up, then it's Halloween, then it's Kendall's, then it's Chris's. That's a lot of work for you. I'm a control freak. You're everything, Chloe. Thank you. You're a control freak and beautiful. Thank you. I 100% am a control freak, and I find that to be a beautiful compliment. So thank you very much. So I sent everyone the RSVP email. So what do you Different. got? You got our lifers? Lifers, Same. the Milan chat, all the people. Are you a control freak and you find it as a compliment? Well, if so, then today's episode you are not going to want to miss. Welcome back to Through the Lens with your favorite family, the Kardashians, season five, episode three. So strap yourself on. Today we are going on a trip with the Kardashians talking all things control. And as Chloe immediately says, she's a control freak and it's often talked down upon by the rest of the family about how regimen Chloe is in regards to her routine, wanting to be the one that plans everything. She literally says later, and that she does this, that she wants to be the control freak because she knows that she'll get it done exactly how Kim wants it to be done. Well, that's her seeking this false certainty because the true thing is you really don't ever have control, my friends, sorry to say. And when you truly believe you have control, like Chloe does when she believes she can plan, what she's doing is she's trying to create this false sense of safety and stability and predictability. But we all know we've all been there where Things aren't very predictable. Things aren't very certain. Things aren't very safe. But yeah, we've become this society that it's like free your mind, be here now, but let's create vision boards and let's manifest and let's quit our nine to five so we have time freedom and all these different freedoms to have control of our life. Those are both very contradictory things, my friend. So it blows my mind every time I see personal development selling people the tactic of be here now, right? As well as manifest the life of your dreams, control what your destiny looks like and be here now. Like you can't wonder and they, they're not in alignment. When you are in the now, you are in spirit. There is no control because things just are. There is no need for control because you are not comparing anything to the past and you're not predicting anything for the future. You just are in the moment totally because that's all that exists is the moment. So there is no need to control because there is no understanding of the future and there is no remembrance of the past. You are just fully present in that moment. But when we are seeking control, it is again because we are seeking that full sense of safety, predictability, stability. And you know, there is a multitude of DSM diagnoses that we could go down that rabbit hole of this is why you do what you do, what you do. But honestly, the, the awareness that you're doing it is massive, first of all. And truly, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter why you're doing it because we're all pretty much doing it for the same reason. And that is because we're living in the ego belief system, the belief system of fear. And the only way we feel that we're not fully engulfed by the fear is to believe we are seeking control. So when you are living in that, that lens of fear, which is the ego belief system, you are constantly living in the past and predicting the future and you are never in that present moment and that is where you become the control freak but the problem is even more that when you believe you have created this false sense of certainty and predictability in something and you know you've planned it out perfectly and you know everything's going to happen just as it's meant to yeah, it may happen like that a few times because that's just how it was going to happen but the moment it doesn't, it is just that much more impactful within at the, you're just like in this massive pain because even you 
can't create this safe bubble for yourself. And in that moment, you realize that you really realize how truly out of control you are, but then you immediately try to take control again. And that looks in a multitude of ways. And I, I, what pops in my mind right now when I'm saying this is when your friend comes to you and they are bawling and hurt because of X, Y, or Z occurred in their life. Let's say someone cheated on them or their dog died or, you know, whatever it may be. And you see they're in so much pain. What is your immediate response? I would say probably 90% of people, their immediate response would be to try to tell them it's going to be okay, to console them and get them to stop crying, to get them to this place of like, okay, I can get through this instead of just being with them in the moment and truly allowing those emotions to flow through. And when you try to, you know, get them to, to, to stop crying or to feel better, the only reason why you're truly doing that is because you yourself are uncomfortable in that space, that raw space of the present moment of feeling out of control. So you immediately even attempt to control your friend. Yes, you're like, Ashley, that's awful. I don't do that. But this isn't happening consciously. You're not consciously thinking, oh, I'm going to control Susie because I can't stand where she's at right now because I don't like to be in that place. No, 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 no. This is all happening subconsciously. But that is why we're constantly seeking control. And like today, as much as we want to believe that we're in this, this moment of awakening and, you know, the Gaia channel and all this stuff talks about how we're having this massive shift in the collective consciousness and that we're going to awaken into like Atlanta Sears and blah, blah, blah. Are we really? Hmm. Or is the massive conscious shift happening actually deeper in the ego belief system because truly consciousness is of the ego. So that would make sense. So I guess maybe that statement is true, but I think many of us are confused and believe it's this moment of being, of finding inner peace, uh, having more in the now moments, more flow state. But what we're doing is we're seeking to control all of these things that truly at, at their most purest form and the truest form are out of control are not a, 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 even a thing of control. Like, I don't even know if we could shove them in the definition of of control or out of control. They just are. They just occur, just like miracles. Miracles cannot occur when you are, when you are trying to make them occur. They happen in the moments that you create space for them to come forward. So if you are constantly attempting to control things in your life, there is not space for the, that inner peace to come in. There's not space for the miracles to show up. There's not space for spirit to work through you, but instead he's fully in this place of the ego and it gets really heavy. That feels like a very massive burden, especially when like what Chloe says is where she's like this control freak for others. I mean, she's only doing Kim's birthday because she believes it will only be done to Kim's standards. And she's the one that actually does that. So now she's taking on this burden of not only creating a false sense of certainty for herself, a false sense of safety for herself, but for Kim as well. So if something were to go wrong, then she's reiterating this narrative that I'm guessing is playing under there. Otherwise, you wouldn't be seeking control over that of like unworthiness and not capable of following through with commitments and, you know, the the narratives go deeper and deeper, but the ultimate desire and the belief, um, the ultimate desire is to, to be able to control our lives, to be able to create our destiny, to create the lives of our dreams. But the problem is, my friend, you don't know. We always, there's this, this, this new fad of your highest self, right? We talk a lot about our highest self. I talk about the Holy Spirit, but really that guide that knows best, that can see the bigger picture, that can guide you along this journey to your optimal place. And I think it's, um, Ed Milet might say, when you die, or Tony Robbins, when you die, you're going to meet the best version of yourself. What is that going to look like? And what are you going to look like? What? Do, how does that change things in your life? And it's like this again, this need 
to be able to predict the end instead of listening to that guide. Instead, when you were seeking control, you were saying, I know best, not you, highest self, not you, Holy Spirit, not you, Jesus, not you, God, none of you. I know what's best. So I'm going to do everything to control this moment. But the truth is you can't control the moment. So you're just constantly living in this past, in the future, and you've completely missed the present examples there like after my divorce I felt so out of control when things were ripped out from under me and you know happiness was gone but really I thought I had control over that I thought I had control over you know my my status my family all these things and I just remember begging my ex-husband please 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 just let's make it till Jaden graduates high school and to me that was the sense of control I always had was like I'm doing this for Jaden we are going to ensure things happen as they are for Jaden to make sure he has the stable space and you know isn't dealt a crappy hand and when my ex-husband said no this is where things are going I was crushed because I I realized I never actually had control. There was more than one person in this relationship. And even if there wasn't, like, I don't ever have control. So despite what the world saw, which was Ashley appearing to completely go out of control, meaning going to the bar every night, doing things that no one would imagine her doing, that was the one thing I felt I had control over. I had the control to discipline myself. I had the control, and I don't mean like a positive discipline. I mean a painful, you need to suffer because you can't even control your own life. So instead, we controlled it in this manner of pain and suffering and separation, which makes sense because the control in the first aspect of happiness was always coming from the place of the ego. So when that falls apart, it's going to come from the ego again, which is pain and suffering and sacrifice. Instead of when you're just living in the present moment, it always just is. And there is no need to seek control. There is because it it's ever present. It always just is. There is no past to, to bring into the present and there is no future to predict for. So I would ask you, if, if you carry this crown of a control fear, freak, what is your greatest fear? What is your fear? What is your desire in this, in this control you are seeking? Because I will give you a secret. You do have control over one thing in your life, and that is your perception. That is how you view things. Do you view them from a place of fear or a place of love? Based on your perception will be exactly how you experience everything. That is literally the only control you have. And the moment you attempt to control and manipulate the things outside of you, I promise you one day you will be disappointed. And it might be a great disappointment to the point that you feel you can't rebound back from it. But I promise you can. You just have to choose different, meaning choose your perception. How are you viewing that situation? Can you view it from a place of love? Can you flip that script on its head? Can you flip that narrative you've always had on its head and realize I've been trying to control something that is actually outside of my control and I'm going to choose to view this from a place of love? No more fear. No more fear, my friend. And yes, you're like, oh my gosh, but there's so many things I need to work through. And that's why I encourage you. You know, therapists are wonderful. Coaches are wonderful. Friends are wonderful. There are many people that are waiting for you to walk with you on your journey. If what you are hearing today in this video is so overwhelming and you have no idea where to start. But I promise you, if you made it this far in the video, you've already started. You've already opened your mind to bring awareness to something that is weighing you down, something that is holding so much weight over you. And I promise you, friend, that is one of the hardest steps is the first step of bringing awareness. So congratulations to that. And I... I'm so grateful if you have tuned into this entire video and there's so much love for you. 
by no means am I perfect, and there are many moments I am trying to control in my life from here to there, and one being starting a running career this past Saturday, and I, I pushed my body as far as it could the first day out running, and guess what? Because I thought I was completely in control and that my body was in this optimal position, that's how much I am actually hurting and, and my body is, is paying the toll. So my running career was short-lived for this moment. Well, I sit and recover because I went into that space of the ego and believed I had full control and pushed my limits instead of fully just dropping in and allowing the guidance to occur and not care about the future and not bring in the past, but to just be in that present moment. So we're on this journey together. As always, friends, thank you so much for tuning in. That was our trip with the Kardashians. All things control. And man, this is a rabbit hole. We could go so deep into the control rabbit hole. But today we will keep it light. Just add awareness. Make sure to like, subscribe, turn on notifications. We are doing all the things these days. Jacob Collier, the Kardashians, Jesus and the Chosen. And you may ask, oh my gosh, Ashley, how do those even make sense? Well, first thing is we are all just projections of Christ. So essentially, Chloe is the same as Jesus, is the same as Jacob Collier, is the same as me and you. It's just we get to see all these amazing different perspectives and views through the lens to unwind our own mind while we get to watch some of our favorite people. <sighs> Thank you so much for tuning in, my friend. And as always, remember you are worth it. So much love. Bye-bye.